There's a lot of things that need to change in Destiny 2, but today we're going to talk about new features and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, welcome to Guardian Watcher. So today, I wanted to talk about new features that I feel should be in Destiny 2. But before we get into the video, if you haven't already entered into the Destiny 2 Forsaken Annual Pass giveaway for the month of November, then click on the link in the description box below for your chance to win. Just as a disclaimer, this video is not to bitch, complain, or criticize Destiny 2 or Bungie in any way, shape, or form. This series is to point out the flaws in the game and give solutions to either fix the issue or make the game better. With all that said, today we are going to talk about new features that should be implemented in Destiny 2. Now I have 5 key features that I want to talk about first and then we will end the video with a few honorable mentions. The first two key features kind of go hand in hand with each other. So let's start with number one, which is increased sensitivity. As of this video, in our settings tag for Destiny 2, on the right hand side, under look controls, we have three different options. Vertical inversion, horizontal inversion, and look sensitivity. Why anyone would invert their vertical or horizontal controls is still mind boggling to me. Anyway, as for the look sensitivity, there are about 10 options, numbers 1 through 10, which increase the sensitivity the higher you go up. Personally, I always play on a 10 sensitivity due to coming from a COD background, and unfortunately, the 10 sensitivity is the highest we can actually get. However, I feel like the sensitivity isn't high enough, and it would be better off being set to 15 or 20, being the highest sensitivity for Destiny 2. Now, I understand not a lot of people like using high sensitivity, and that's fine, but there are those out there that, like myself, wish there was a higher sensitivity. I'll use 15 as a number for my example. If Bungie updated this area, they could either add another row below 6 to 10, showing sensitivity 11 through 15, or Bungie can make subfolders with the look sensitivity showing three boxes, labeled 1 through 5, 6 through 10, and 11 through 15. Inside each box would have its corresponding numbers in them. The same goes if Bungie made the sensitivity go to 20. Now, this is an option, but a lot of Guardians actually want it. Maybe if we keep asking for it, we'll actually get it. The next feature, as I have said before, goes hand in hand with the first one, and that is auto-targeting. Now, auto-targeting is not, I repeat, is not the same as aim assist. Aim assist is the internal function in the game that helps you get on target. For example, let's say you have a hand cannon and you are aiming close to, but not actually on the target's head, and you are still getting credit for crit shots. That is aim assist. But let me throw something else at you. Let's say you are in game in a gunfight with an auto rifle and just before you kill your opponent one of their teammates runs in between you guys and then your gun automatically switches targets to the new guy and then you die because the first opponent is still shooting at you. That my friend is auto targeting. Now raise your hand if this has happened to you. You can't see but I'm definitely raising my hand because it has happened to me so often. If you go into your settings tab again, on the right hand side, under controller behavior, there is an option that says auto look centering. Auto look centering is not auto targeting. Auto look centering centers you on the target's chest and then you have to make corrections from there. I have this option turned off as well. But in this same section, it only has two options, auto look centering and controller vibration. There is plenty of room here to add the auto targeting option and be able for us to turn it on or off. And believe me, I want to turn it off. And if you have never experienced this in Destiny 2, then you don't know the frustration yet, but you will and probably soon after this video. The reason why these two go hand in hand is because if you are a true gamer, not saying a fanboy, but if you are a true gamer, then you know that the specs inside a PC is not as limited as they are in console. Now, I'm not getting into the whole platform wars with anyone, okay? Because we all know that, you know, PC's the best. Just kidding. Or am I? Anyways, I have a PC and a PS4 Pro and I play Destiny 2 on my PS4. The PC version of Destiny 2 does not have these issues because keyboard and mouse are far superior than controller. You cannot deny that. 
Because of this, Bungie doesn't worry about sensitivity or auto-targeting on the PC version of Destiny 2 because of the precision that a keyboard and mouse has over a controller. Thumbsticks are not as precise as a keyboard and mouse. A lot of people are using things like Cinch or Scuff controllers to mitigate the gap between controllers and keyboard and mouse by remapping buttons and yes, these types of controllers are legal to use. If you guys would like me to do an updated video comparing these two controller companies, then let me know in the comment section below. Or, you can watch an older video that I have done linked in the description below. But that's not all. We also use things like Control Freaks to help with our movement in-game on a console. PC doesn't have to do any of that, which is why it is important that we have these features on a console version of Destiny 2 and any future Destiny games. The third feature is one that I'm sure that a lot of people will love, and that is Gear Loadouts. Gear Loadouts is a very huge thing in many games. Being able to switch to your PvE gear for strikes, nightfalls, or the raid, even in PvP, being able to switch from your testing gear in quick play, or getting your tryhard gear on in an instant for comp or trials, whenever that comes back, is huge. Gear Loadouts in PvE and PvP has been the norm for many MMORPGs for years. Now, I know, Destiny 2 is not an MMORPG, but it does share a lot of the same roles of those types of games. And yeah, I'm sure that there are a lot of third-party apps that allow you to make loadouts, but it's not the same thing as an in-game function, and it should be, and I'm pretty sure many would agree. Speaking of apps, this brings us to our fourth new feature that should be in Destiny 2, and that is the Vendors in the Bungie app. Now, let me explain. Wouldn't it be nice to relax at home while you game? You know, just sit back, kick your feet up, hop on the Bungie app, talk to your clanmates, and in between, pick up bounties or any type of mats from the vendor while you're loading into a loading screen to do a raid or go into the Crucible. Buying mats or picking up bounties from the vendors through the Bungie app saves a lot of time and it's heavily convenient, but I'm sure tons of people would definitely like to do that. This last feature is kind of a toss up, but it deserves a shot at not being an honorable mention and that is buying exotics with silver. Now if you don't know, this very thing is already in place in South Korea. Bungie has made a specific version of Destiny 2 called Destiny Guardians, which has all of the content of Destiny 2 including Forsaken, but they also have a new vendor that replaces Tess Everest called Yuna. Yuna sells all of the exotics in the game at the soft cap, which is power level 500, on a rotation of course, for silver, which means yes, microtransactions. Hear me out first. It has been close to 7 weeks since Forsaken launched and I just got my first Forsaken armor for my hunter like 3 days ago. And at exotic was the shards of Galanor, which I might add. <laughs> but grinding on a day to day basis since Forsaken has came out is a huge bitch. Zerstil as of this video doesn't sell any Forsaken exotics and every time I have seen an exotic engram on the floor or in the postmaster I get so excited just to be let down due to it being an exotic pre-forsaken from which I already had. Now in order to make this work for everyone so it's not like a play to win type of thing, a few adjustments would have to be done. We'll still have Yuna as the vendor but also keep Tess since she doesn't really give us any exotic weapons or armor. First, the exotics that we get from Yuna should be at least 5 levels above our current level unless we are already at the max level of 600 from which then yes exotics would have dropped at 600. Since Yuna only sells 4 exotics at a time like Xur does, the rotation of the exotic should be at least 1 season 1, 1 season 2, 1 season 3, and 1 season 4 exotic. These exotics would obviously be weekly at random since Yuna doesn't leave the tower at all and will only be active to exotics that are not tied to a quest. As for a price, I feel that a good price of an exotic from Yuna using silver, I would say is a thousand silver, which equivalates to $9.99, so roughly $10. Anything lower than that, then people would just spam buying exotics and we really don't want that. Even though this could be a great idea, 
it could create a lot of controversy within the Destiny community outside of Korea. A lot of people would love the idea of buying exotics that you want, while others think it's just another tactic for Bungie to use in order to get more money, and then there are some people who would rather enjoy the grind. One of my clanmates had said and actually put it pretty simple, quote, if you want to grind for it, then grind for it. If you don't, then just buy it, end quote. And I actually definitely agree with this viewpoint. But on top of that, there are thousands of guardians that do not have the time to grind every single day in order to get the weapons and armor that they want. People in the community need to understand that people work, have a career, have kids, take care of their family, etc. So in my opinion, it is very understandable why someone would want to be able to buy exotics for silver. So those are the main features that I feel should be added into Destiny 2. Let me know in the comments section of any new features you guys would like to see in Destiny 2 and I may make a part 2 to this video. As for the honorable mentions that I had promised, the first being 3 of coins. Now since Forsaken's launch, 3 of coins has been removed from the game and it really, really sucks because prior to Forsaken I had bought like 35 3 of coins and added it to the 45 that I already had. Yes, Bungie did return the legendary shards that we spent on the 3 of coins but it would be nice to see three of coins again. The second honorable mention is trading. Having a trading system in Destiny 2 is a good and bad idea. It's a good idea because if you or your mate has an item, weapon, armor, etc. that you don't want or need, you can easily give it to them. This is also a bad idea because I can see a lot of people in the community turning this trading system into a black market and asking for a ridiculous amount of mats, glimmer, legendary shards, or a combination of any of the items. So I can actually see why Bungie won't introduce trading into the Destiny franchise. So let me know what you guys think about the video, and if you guys actually have any ideas for a future video on what needs to change, let me know that in the comments below as well. And that my friends brings us to the end of the video, if you enjoyed this video feel free to watch these videos as well, you never know, you just might like them, and if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more, because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime, and I will see you guys next time.